to Marie. So I was like, you know, trying something new as far as like setting up the, the kitchen. And since I got so much more space, like how could I use it in another way? And I decided that I guess if I set this up like a table, which it is a table, I actually have to put the other chair there. But I was thinking, no, not the other chair there because I want to stare outside and look at the nature, right? But it's this, this thing back here. I say I'm doing a video. It's not that flattering, but I can, it's the meter, but I can use it. I can cover it with a painting or something, but I don't think I'm going to keep this because I was having such popping Wi-Fi. Like, oh my gosh, now the Wi-Fi went accidentally. I know this is about Afrocentric loungewear, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, Afrocentric loungewear. But anyway, the view that I currently have is an outside, as, as an outside view. So it lets me look outside, although the bed and the people, you can see the people, the whole bed, but the bed for the outside gazebo bed is in, kind of in the way of the view. Um, and I thought like I was a way to eat and drink my tea. Um, instead of having a, a, a table, which is normally I have this chair facing out this way, but now I'm having it facing this way. But I don't actually like it like this. And then I have the other chair over here, which is which I use the curtains back there as a backdrop for videos, right? But I don't actually like it out here because I would rather look at my stuff, you know, especially since I'm getting it together, getting my other, um, you know, you call it, um, the bamboo done over finished here and then we got the bamboo coming up on the top of the cabinets so it doesn't really work for me and then when people walk by they kind of looking at me so like no I don't really like it I like the two chairs together now it's funny though this way I'm actually using the chair I find I sit in this chair and if Anasi is here then he sits really right over here that's where he sits so we never actually use the chair that is here so this way, I mean, I'm actually kind of using both of them, and I like that. I do like this idea of having somewhere to sit back the way I'm sitting back now. I like that idea, you know. And then I could, uh, you know, maybe put this on something a little higher, or I could just keep it like this. So what I love about it is when I want to turn it this way, I'll turn it this way. If I want it the other way, I want it the other way. But what I realized by as soon as I put the camera on and show that direction, I love looking at the, the the kitchen. I love looking at the things in the kitchen. I can see that. Like, I love that more than I love looking outside because, you know, when I'm walking through the house, I can see outside. I can just walk outside. There's a whole gazebo for sitting outside. You feel me? So I don't think it's necessary. But it's always good to try things that are new. Hey, 15 people, thanks for coming, y'all. I'm going to be on a lot more. So let me show you. I, I, don't, I don't love it at all. But, you know find something new right so just that that I mean it's cute like when you look at it here it looks like a restaurant it looks like a restaurant so and then let's okay you know what let's have a little fun let's say that we take the other one and we do the same thing so I'm gonna put you on the tripod I gotta take you out of this thing because I know you're getting nothing but blue and I'm sorry because I was thinking I was just gonna have a chit chat so I didn't turn this I didn't turn this into the landscaping like I've been doing lately. I you know I'm getting better at this kind of stuff. All right, so let's do the thing. Let's, hold on, I know you're not seeing everything. Let's take the bed out. So I get my mic. All right, we can put the bed outside, but it looks like rain, and we're in rainy season. If it was in rainy season, the bed would go right outside. Let's take the other chair, and let's hook it up. Let's look at that. Let's see. I mean, it's cute. It looks like a block of at the cafe. Like, this is definitely inviting because you're assuming that you and somebody else is going to have breakfast or dinner or tea or whatever we're having. I don't think it's bad. Okay, y'all. So, oh my God, we got nothing but trolls. Y'all not in the house? It ain't nothing but the trolls. Hey, trolls. <laughs> I was out of bed. Hey, 
controls, which ain't got nothing better to do. You want to be around all the fabulous blackness. Is that what it is? You want to be around the blackness, the gorgeousness. You like my life? Is it that good? Okay, so hopefully soon, uh, hopefully soon we'll get, um, uh, we'll get, hey, book Miss T, baby, we'll get uh, one of the moderators to come on. Hey, sweetie. So, yeah, so the idea, I mean, it actually is, is really cute. It's a cute, it's like a cafe. So I think it's very cute. Like, I like it. I love it. I love it. It's very nice. It's very nice. I like it. Now, now, though, so now we got the big bed. And yes, I don't want the bed. I mean, I love the bed. The bed is beautiful, but I like the bed. Hold on one second. They're coming fast. I like the bed on the bed, so to speak. Um, yeah, I like to, I like to, um, I love the bed, but I love the bed outside on the let me see, Miss T, baby, I want to make sure you're good. Okay. I like the bed on the bed. You know what I'm saying? I like the bed outside, and outside would be here. So that bed belongs on the frame, but it's going to rain, I can tell. I already do the bikes out. Okay, I ain't doing my way. I'm going to storm somewhere else. But, you know, I can smell the rain, too, so it's going to pour. So I'm going to have to put everything back because the bed needs to be where the bed needs to be. But I love it still. It was fun. But I still do like, like, okay, so if I'm here, let's just look at this. Can I, yeah, I think I would turn it back the other way. Even though it's very cute, you know, you can just see yourself having a great conversation for hours. The thing is, like I was saying before, everything can be, everything can be, changed everything can be turned around you know what i'm saying at any given moment and that's the beauty of it all so i like that everything is good so yeah i'm gonna take it back around like i said we got the trolls you know they love an afrocentric home design child everything but it's very cute i think because of the seeds too it really the seeds gives it like we like we feel like we're in a little cafe so yep yeah, but the bed there, no. And like I said, the bed, so I, I, are you wondering like why when the bed is here? The bed cannot, but that looks so cute. Oh my God, I still say it looks so cute. The bed cannot, absolutely cannot be outside in the rain. It would be ruined. So I used to sometimes store it in the living room. And if I can get, if I can get, um, let me show you the outfit too. If I can get, hey, yeah, and it's blocking the entrance a little too. Yeah, blocking the entrance a little for sure. That part didn't bother me as much as, but it is, as much as, love the wall color, thank you. I'm gonna actually repaint it because it's fading a bit. Uh, as much as the bed not having a place and the bed, the place where the bed was, it wasn't really so cute. You wanna see the outfit in the back. This is what I call my lounge here. So I bought this at this, um, it's this kind of, I don't want to say it's, it's a market. It uh, happens twice a month in Accra, and it's called Green Butterfly Market. And it has all these wonderful vendors. I mean, it's everything from home, coral, chairs, masks, tables, food. I used to go there to get my soul green vegetables, um, everything that they've got. Of course, clothing, beauty, particular. And so this outfit right here is from there. It has pockets. I love this part. But what I, thank you if you love it, it's pretty. But let me tell you, I didn't buy it thinking that I was going to do, uh, that it was going to be, hold on, y'all, let me just get this off. I didn't buy it thinking that it was going to be loud for it. This sometimes happens. I'll buy something and then I'll wear it outside and I feel like it's more lounge wear. It, to me, it becomes more lounge wear than it does, than it feels like for outdoor wear. Or, and so it becomes lounge wear. Like I think I wore this out twice. And like I think I'm wearing it, I mean, it's comfortable. It's like a wonderful thing to wear. Maybe if I was going to different events. I mean, I think it's great for the village too. I might even wear it out, but some things just wind up becoming uh, for the house. 
And I feel like loungewear is something that is comfortable. Let me get, I know some more people have been here. Hey, Alan. I know loungewear is something comfortable. Yes, if you don't know, it was part of a home. Exactly, we think it was a cafe. You inspired me to wear more color. Oh, I'm so glad, Nicole. Color is so wonderful. And I love it, right? But this is the kind of stuff that I just wear for loungewear. I got like a few, five or five other outfits that I literally bought that I thought in my mind that I was going to wear outside. And it just lends, it lends itself to wearing, to being, being part of the house. I feel like, like being in an Afrocentric home and having an Afrocentric home, to me, means that uh, maybe you're even Afrocentric. So I feel like your clothes and your jewelry and even the way you're, you are when no one is looking is just as important as the, the stuff on the wall. So you are part of the artwork. You are the Afrocentric home designer, and you are really the Afrocentric home design. Like it came all from you and through you. So I, I love my clothes. Like when I when I design my house well, and when I do something new, and when I or I do a refresh, I always want to put on a special outfit. If the outfit ain't that cute when I put it on, if the outfit's not that cute, or and or when I clean up and I have. A Outfit on maybe my cleaning outfit. I will change that outfit in a minute. Let me know. Put this bed back. Let me know if you do the same thing. Do you find that when you clean up your house or change something around? Do you find? <laughs> uh, do you find that you want to now change the outfit? So I'm gonna turn that chair back around. But do you find that it's still pretty? Still, still pretty. If I, but that's the good thing. That chair is there. So that chair is going to go this way or this way. I love that I can turn it around for the videos. I can still be out, look outside. I can still have that cafe artistic feel. And you know what I love about this? It's Afrocentric. If I was a little taller, yeah, I would fix it. Let me see with my broom if we could straighten. Actually, I had a stick over here. Um, I would still... I would. What I love about this, y'all, you know, you, the trolls are here. Uh, hold on. So I don't know. Um, I would. I love this because it's Afrocentric without maybe what people typically think of Afrocentricity. Let me see if I could get this to be a little straighter. Okay, okay. All right. So I'll fix that one. And this one right here. Let's see if I could straighten it out as well. Let's see. A little harder. It's easy though. All I gotta do is take it out that nail and, and push it through another one of the holes so that because you could tell it's not gonna stay straight because the nail is not in the middle. But you just take it out and push it in, and that's what I do. But that is still a lot better. Um, but this is the kind of net stuff that I really want to be doing is showing my other ways to bring Afrocentricity into the home. Uh, without feeling like, you know, with a more neutral palette. How about that? With a more neutral palette. This will do it. So the color of the wall is mango, but I'm going to actually repaint it because it's been about a year and three months and the color is fading. Naturally, it does that just from the sun and the whole bit. But, and then the sieves is definitely the baskets on the wall, very Afrocentric. I call it my sieve gallery wall. But even the bed over there made from the reeds, uh, from the that's near the marsh or near the you know near the the swamps even that's what they make this from that's what they make the mat this matting on the floor is the same as the same material this one's just thicker they almost call this the king's version of the bed and they literally call it a bed I call it a mat but they call it a bed and so I, I, when I saw the thicker one I knew I had to have it I didn't know where I would use it how I would use it I didn't think I was going to use it traditionally as a bed but I knew that I would use it Hold on, y'all. Just lie. But I knew that I would use it. Um, and so when I built this, the bed outside, which is the bed that literally is the bed frame for outside, I knew exactly I got to fix this. This is really not a tablecloth, but I'm going to have my seamstress turn it into a tablecloth, finish the ends, make it look nice, even it out. But it's not a tablecloth. It's just a piece of cloth that I had left over. Um... But yeah, so the bag, going back to the bag, uh, the bag came about 
uh, once I had the frame, I said, oh, I know the perfect bed. And I ran to the market because they sell it at the markets. And I ran to the market. And I was like, I can get my bed now. And so I love it. It's very beautiful. But like I said, I love that this still is Afrocentric. Um, I'm going to fix that. Still Afrocentric. Uh, in another way, right? In that neutral palette. That not that has not been done. We know that it has been done. We know that it's Afrocentric, minimalist, Afrocentric, all that. We know all of that. But I feel like it has been more done. Like I said, this is really not a cloth. Um, but it's more done. Uh, it hasn't really, I don't think people typically look at me. So they look at me like, oh, it's always going to be colorful, you know? Always going to be colorful. So, you know, so to let people know, no, you can have that pop of color and still have that neutral palette. And I love it. And this is, I told you earlier, this is the weeds that are from, but if you look at them with their detail, they're so beautiful. And of course, I was saving this bear. It's called, what do they call it? That club. It's the local bear. I use that vase. We gotta bring in that nature. But I love the simplicity. And it is very pretty. Like I'm I'm in love with it, y'all. And y'all just here playing with me. I mean, I love the bed on that side. It doesn't even need um, the other chair. But typically it's that chair with the back against the wall and the same duplicate chair, which is next to me, next to it, and it's facing this way. Which is actually quite beautiful as well. Um, this is another beautiful item that I bought, and uh, it is locally made, and I got it from the market. It has my lemongrass in it, and it is made from raffia, and it is um, made by men, the men in the area, and it's also a wonderful item, too. You can fill that up with, especially if you're having like a little get-together with your friends, a little brunch, you can just fill it up with some really beautiful items. Of course, you can use it as a fruit basket as well. So I really love that too. But I'm loving the simplicity of this because I think I'm really feeling the energy of, of cafe, <laughs> Afrocentric cafe. I mean, it could be any part of Africa, an idea of the sieves giving kitchen vibes. And so, yeah, I've literally created a sieve and um, a seed gallery wall. And this item here, you know, is the shredder. And they actually use this too. So this is, none of this is old fashioned. None of this is what they used to use. This is all stuff that they use every single day. So I love it, I love it. So yeah, for now we're gonna just turn that way. Now this here is my, uh, for, oh, sorry, it was already in the right place. This is the backdrop. This one I use when I want an Afrocentric backdrop. So your curtains, if you wanted the videos, take nice pictures, you could have this as a backdrop. I could see even having your girlfriends over and then including one of the things that the part of your girlfriend brunch is having them all be able to take pictures in front of the, the curtain. Um, it's so funny, I mean, you might think, like, what is that, people do that? but. I've had Africans come visit Manasi's family and they want to take pictures in front of the curtain. They want people to see, like, look at me. I got this kente in the back of me. So I love it. I think it's just a, it's a feeling that it gives me. It gives me a lot of wonderful energy and uh, wonderful, like, I don't know. It just is very vibrant. And I love, I love vibrancy. Oh, my God. I love to feel. I want my space to make me feel something. So, and I remember I was saying, I do still like the chia don't face the other way because this is the kit, that's the part of the kitchen, but this is for me too, hold on. This is for me too, like I said, the, we're gonna get the cabinets together, you know, the carpenter's gonna come tomorrow, we're gonna get all that together, but I absolutely love my kitchen. So at this point, let's just, I'm gonna put some dishes away and do the things that I need to do. Let's see, I think I'm going to get out this bowl. Um, actually, what I really, really need to do is I need to cook. And I'm not going to do that because I did that yesterday. Today, I just want to talk about lounge food. Maybe every day, 
but I'll do my outfit of the day. I'll, I'll do it for the next few days. I'll do an outfit of the day loungewear. And I'll get to show you loungewear in that. But I like every little detail of things to be out from Sunday. That's what catches my eye down to the the giraffe teapot, the Giamine cup, the clay pot, the made in Africa uh, trays, more of the, these are actually baskets that's made from palm branches, but they're also seeds as well. The different foods itself is Afrocentric. The patch patch, I call it tile, from the broken tile, the wooden bowls, just, just everything. You know, the trash can, that's really, it was a laundry basket. But I turned it, I used, I used it, and when I saw it, I threw a trash can right away because I already have a cane laundry basket. Just the whole idea. So, of course, of course, <laughs> you want to have, take it off. Of course, you want to have your clothes matching. And it is nice to sit here and just look out and just contemplate life and look outside and see the green grass, you know. Ah, just love it. These cabinets came in, y'all. These cabinets came in and it just changed my whole world. It's like something I wanted and needed. And like I said, they're not even finished. They're not properly installed, right? They need to be have a fastener close it. No, don't laugh because I got a string on that, but it will knock me upside the head. They need to be even out just a tad. But more importantly, they're, they're starting off like this so they can end up like this. So you gotta start one. And I was saying, instead of doing the, um, instead of doing the, um, what do you call bamboo, I really, really think that I wanna do, I really, really think that I want to do something that I was telling you on, it's called Allah. And I wish I had some Allah to show you, but I don't. I'm thinking it's still a natural material. It still has that, it's gonna dry into that beigey color. It's a very beautiful material. So I'm really, really thinking that I would do the Allah. But if I don't, it doesn't matter. I can still do the bamboo. And just like I said, switch it up, have it more looking like uh, in the, going in a diagonal area, a diagonal angle. Thank you for all that love. What I love too is, I love when I say I'm going to do something and then I do it. I love that part. I love when it comes to life. It's not even that I do it, that it comes to life. So yeah, we got some more stuff to do. So we have to repaint the whole kitchen, same color called mango. Uh, we have to finish this, this as far, definitely this has got to be finished with the bamboo. We got to get the cabinets to have fasteners. We got to put the handles on better. We need some washers for that. And we have to create latches so that we can open and close it. Although I love the wood. I love the natural. I love the grain. I love everything about it. Um, then, of course, we decide if we're going to do the bamboo or the ala. And so that will be finished. I'm thinking about after painting the walls. We'll see. I may want to uh, spray paint the seeds, just these. So that may be yellow, so I can really highlight the yellow. Why I got cabinets was because it was very busy. It was a very busy kind of kitchen, and at some point, it's so much to look at that I just wanted those, those accent pieces to stand out. I actually, I guess I'm changing in some ways, not all the way, because every room is different. I actually, uh, um, what are the windows? Your homes are always warm and beautiful. The windows are made from bamboo, according to me. The windows are made from bamboo. So they, that's the, and then there's a screen, or they call it net. Uh, we call it the screen, but it's a net to keep the mosquitoes out. And then they, there was none of this wood here, these two by two or two by fours. I think it's two by two, I don't know. But that was all put in. And then uh, most people just put a screen in and leave it. But I didn't want that, or some cheap uh, kind of like metal as instead of the wood but I really wanted bamboo. And this is what um, the carpenter did. Uh, so that, the thinner bamboo, cause you can have thicker bamboo, was inspired me so much that I wanted to see it again. And I, and I have this brother named Ratty. You see how tight his bamboo is. He does an excellent, excellent job. So I love that. So yeah, the windows and the door, the door is also a net and made from the same bamboo. 
I love bamboo. Bamboo is a, such a freaking vibe. All of it. This is this is cane. This is cane. You know, cane, bamboo. All of it is a vibe. Thank you. You you thank you, a magnificent look. Thank you. So I love it. So yeah, the kitchen is becoming very much more neutral, right? With of course we got the calabash. So the proper color now is the kente print and the cheers. The yellow refrigerator that was a bit, it was gray, y'all. It was a terrible looking gray. And I, I couldn't take it, so I had somebody uh, spray painted uh, yellow for me, and it was just a bomb. And, and then, of course, the pop of color also is coming from the kitchen, uh, the curtains. And then uh, I got a blue painting because inside the cabinets on the wall is a blue. And that's my hate blue. That's for my spiritual protection. Um, but I love, but if I want, and like I said, I'm sorry, y'all, this is not a landscape. Let me open this up so we get some, because this is my only light that goes into the next room. I get the light from the window that you just asked about. So if I don't open the curtains, we don't get the light as well. Of course, we can turn on the other light. But this is my, this is my color room. Not that I have to have a color room and then a neutral room. And I just, it's got to be what I feel. But this is more of my color room. I went there. I designed this, my whole idea. I wrote it out. I sketched it. And I had my, my friend Kwame, uh, Kwame carve it. And I think it's so stunningly beautiful, and I love it. It's a bookshelf. And this is the cane dress form. This is the lamp. If you saw the lamp show yesterday on this channel, I did a light show with the calabashes all lit up. And the calabashes. So this room is about color. It's about texture. It's about pattern, right? Like all together at once. I feel like it truly is maximalist. It's look, I got neutral tile floors there, tile floors, but now they were all looking like that gray area, but I had to get tiles. I had the tiles laid. Very neutral now, especially since the cabinet has doors and they're closed. This one I'm going for the maximalist. I mean, that's who I am naturally, is a maximalist. I mean, I, you know, that's the name they're giving me. I'm gonna go with it. This is my office. I decided like, I was looking at the video yesterday. You know why I do videos too? A lot of times you cannot see your space. Hold on, let me wipe y'all off. You cannot see your space the, the, when you're just looking at it with your naked eye in the same way you can see it when you're seeing it on a camera. And so when I do the videos, I play them back. I always see something better. So I decided to take the Ashanti stool, which I'm gonna have it washed and I have my two chairs on the side. They would be able to turn the other way, but I have a fan that I have to keep because every once in a while I need it, but I don't like the way it looks just being out, so it's underneath the table. But, so the chairs are now facing this way. I actually never sit at the chairs, um, but unless, well, I have, these chairs have been coming to me from different apartments, so I've used it as chairs with this table before. But now I can use the Ashanti stool, so let's see how that works. Ashanti stool. So this is my desk, but it can also, it's also though where I do, yeah, where I do my live streams. When I do my uh, master classes, I don't know why, but I'm always over here. This is my spot, right? I love the Ashanti stool. I love the height. I love what's in back of me. It's another view, which is really cool. But uh, my tripod, <laughs> and also too, I picked the beautiful same weeds. So I'll put that over here. This is my tripod stand. <laughs> this is my tripod stand. Let me just you see the Santi stool. Tripod stand. This is what I lean the phone against. And this is my setup. This is my setup when I do my master classes or when I want to, you know, I got something to do on a computer, which is rare because I don't really like computer work. Or sometimes I might eat here. I really do, but I could. And this table is very important to me because I, I didn't have the chairs designed. The chairs were, they are cane chairs. I just had them spray painted white. And thank you for that love. I appreciate it. But um, I did have uh, the table made because I needed a work desk in my boutique, which was inside my house. Well, where I kept my inventories for the boutique because it's an online boutique. So. Um, and I love this table. I love this table. So I will show you why I love this little area. Uh, this is the first cloth that I ever had designed with my daughter did the logo. She's a graphic designer. And so that's the
the cone, which is actually a Dinkra symbol. You pronounce it Juafe. It's spelled D-U-A-F-E. Every time you see D-U, you, you, you say Juafe, cone, but to the side, a little tilt, like black folks, you know, we tilt everything to the side to make it cool. That remember I had my bald head when I first came, when I, well, not when I first came to Ghana, but when I was, I was in Ghana when I created this brand. And then I have the Afrocentric home design. I have the cloth with the Indinkra symbols. And it was just a sample. That's why it's just like, you know, kind of tattered, ragged in the end. But I wound up making a whole curtain out of it. And I will show you. And I changed the direction of the Indinkra symbols. This is from the art center. It is a replica of the Ashanti stool. And the Ashanti stool is what people, folks that are getting married, the man has to buy the wife an Ashanti stool as part of the wedding gift. And also they both have one to sit on. So this is a smaller version of the Ashanti stool. And honey, this, I went to this place called the shop in, um, in uh, Accra, a little gift store. And it, this is really an Afro, it's a palm spirit wine, but I didn't buy the wine or anything. I actually bought um, some Sobolo and she said, I said, oh, I would love to take some home. I had a little cup in the shop. And she said, I said, would you, do you, will you sell bigger amounts? And she said, yeah. And she put it in this. So I got this beautiful bottle that is called Afro. And I love the way it's spelled and everything. So it wanted to be really cool. So I just kind of filled it up with water. And so this is that. And then this beautiful, I told you, I, I'm just bragging on this one, the work of this one handmade basket right here where I live in the village. These baskets, and I have I have a video with the baskets. If you're interested in one, let me know. I can get one for you. But this is kind of like my office in the basket because I'm that's just the kind of person I am. So we have an extra phone in here. I'm teaching my course with my students, the Sacred Woman course or the book. And we have our laptop there. And it's my office. This is my office in a basket. This is also my altar, too, when I want my altar candle, my bell, my water. You know, I use it for various things, and I love it. And I really enjoy sitting. So I have the Ashanti small stool, and then as you saw, I have the Ashanti stool that I'm actually sitting on. And I'm going to say a replica of, and I love the height of this. I love the comfort of the stool that I'm sitting on, so I really loved it. And I love background. Like, what are we giving in the background? You know what I'm saying? Like, and you see, I'm getting natural sunlight from the, the, sun, the, the window in the kitchen just by opening the curtains. And I actually put curtains up here as well. They're just these little short white curtains, but they actually work perfectly. They fit nice and they look good at night if I want to just chill and kind of close the lights out and just come in here and chill. So I love this corner. I love what I've done. Um, I love another little thing I love. I love this poop. It's an African style. I just think it's so gorgeous. Hold on one sec. Uh, I just, AT. AT might not be a real person, but we're going to see. Anyway, I think it's so gorgeous. And um, I just absolutely love it. So this one right here. So I'm sitting on the poop. So let me just show you. I'm sitting on my poof. I can be in my little corner. I can move the poof around too. And I actually, I do. I do a lot. I move it around. I don't know if I'm... Anyway, let's see. I move it around. Um, the trolls are in the house. Um, and they really are crafty, but I'm usually smarter than them. Um, I love that. I think the best thing that ever happened was this floor. So I keep telling you I'm going to get these mats called a boat. Oh, so I, don't know, I keep saying boji mats. They might actually be called boji mats because the boji is what you call the Muslims here. But I'm going to definitely get one. Okay. I think they're playing. So, um, and I'm going to just go with what I know. Um, so, hold on, y'all. Yeah. Uh, I, see the floor? This is what all the floor looked like, even the kitchen. So I'm gonna get this a bougie mat. The reason why I don't, I didn't have a, a mat that extended out is because the door couldn't even close. But I do have, a, I have a few extra mats. I'm gonna try, you know what? I think I can do it. Cause I, I saved some of the bottom of the, of the, of the uh, door. So I might be able to put another mat here, which is these mats. Cause look, I got one, two, 
three left. I can do it. And here, I can definitely put the other mat. It'll just be a little thick over here. So tomorrow when you see me, this is what I'll do. I'll put the mat there. Hey, Basio. How are you? Beautiful lady. Uh, uh, Manasi is coming back from Accra, girl. He's going to be making some new, beautiful fabrics. And I want you all to tell me, as far as your home decor, what would you like me to create? Um, was, today was about lounge clothes. Would you like to make clothes for your lounging? Would you like tablecloths? Do you, are you interested in um, napkins, um, table runners, placemats, um, robes? I have I, my robe. I had my robe on early this morning. Whatever that is, but uh, we got cloth and we coming out with stuff. I'm gonna create um, some lounge wear. I'm gonna create robes, and I'm also specifically aprons because yo, those beautiful, one of a kind design aprons. I left them at the last house. It makes me want to cry. Hey, Latoya B, thank you. It makes me want to cry. I got videos of it, and I was thinking about this new seamstress. I could have her recreate it, and that's okay that it's not going to look exactly the same because who wants it to, you know? I got to let it go, but I the, the, the sketches of that, it wasn't in a book. I tore them out because I would just have her do it again. It's okay. She can replicate it, but I, I, don't, but I want to replicate it with the new fabric anyway. And I'm gonna do new robes, but I definitely, I mean, aprons. I definitely want aprons, y'all. I need, I, love, I wear apron every day before I cook, so I, I use them. So, yeah, just the stuff that you've seen. But like I said, did y'all see the light show yesterday? So I was saying, if this is my now neutral room, then this would be my maximalist, colorful. But of course, I feel like the neutrality of it all is still there. This is grounding it with the seeds on the wall. That, that is definitely grounding it, right, with the seeds on the wall. So that's kind of very much grounding. Uh, look, I feel like the calabashes are very much grounding them. So let's see who is going to be on for a while. Latoya B., you are always around. Usually I'm going to make you one of the moderators. And just means that if the trolls continue, they're going to keep coming. You could throw them out and try to catch them before I do. So, um, yeah, so this is my baskets. This is my color. This is my, yeah. Yes, exactly. According to me, your wall hangings, artifacts, throws, and pillows. Yeah, this, this, is, this is all of that. And I'm a maximalist. I mean, this is the rug I got from Malcolm, the floor. But that, that's how I got over the floor. I couldn't take the floor. And this, in the kitchen, I, I did my best. I tried to mat it out in the kitchen. Terrible idea. Too much food, too much stuff falling on the floor, too much of all of that. It wasn't going to work. So that's why I just broke down and got the tile. And then I brought the tile out all the way because this, this was not cute at all out here. And that was after I, I created the gazebo because... Once I've made it all pretty inside, there was no way to sit outside, and I like outside. And then this one is still, that cane's going to always ground it. Here's the second Ashanti stew as well. I think that this is also going to ground it because the wood finish, I think the baskets are going to ground it. You know, there's so many grounding areas here, and then boom, color, and then boom, calabash, and then boom, calabash, and then, you know, boom. So it's funny how, and then of course the bamboo, I love this, I love this style. I had to have it again. So I got things coming. So I got shelves, the shelves are already cut and ready. Shelving's going on this wall. All of this stuff will then be on the shelf. And then I'll have a curtain, of course, it's like I did in the, uh, you saw it in the Cape Coast apartment. I have a rod and a beautiful, and made from Manasi's fabric, two beautiful long curtains to cover nothing on the floor, which will give us more space to put the things like his guitar and other little wall, I mean, just other little stuff. And it's gonna be very cute, but it's gonna be covered. And that's the main point. And I had this thing made a long time ago out of cane uh, and that's hanging the tiles and stuff. So this is gonna be a cute little space with the, the shelves. And like I said, the shelves have been cut. Just waiting for the coffin to, to come back. This rug, we, I'm getting rid of it. And I'm going to use create some other type of neutral rug. It was actually matching the bathroom. The bathroom is the most underwhelming part of this whole entire house. That's why y'all don't see it, but it's coming. 
is coming together. I'm going to, I'm looking for a carver to uh, make me a tub, tub made from mahogany wood or teak to go into the bathroom that will fit because it's a very narrow bathroom. I need a bathtub. But for those who didn't see the outfit of the day, I was saying I bought this. I had every intention of wearing it outside, and I have probably worn it outside a few times, but it looks like it might be indoor lounge, but it's so pretty, so comfortable. I mean, this is where you go to the market. This is where you go to the market. So those baskets that I showed you that are for sale, and I'll show you. Let me show you. You would take, you would literally take this to the market. So I remember first buying it, I was with Manasi when we first bought it, and then we were already on our way to the market, so we bought this and we went, went on to the market, and while we were standing there, when you order your stuff, when you're buying your stuff, and the ladies put it in your little plastic bag, they all were just constantly putting it in your basket, because that's what they think the basket, because that's what the basket is for. So you know how we in the States will take the canvas bags, the reusable bags, We'll take those bags. Um, people here took more, but they don't. This is the thing. They don't actually use their, their baskets. So this one and the raffia one that I showed you in the kitchen, they don't go, where did you get it from? Hello, it's y'all stuff. <laughs> it's y'all stuff. You know what I'm saying? Where did you get it from? You know? Oh my God, I want one. Are you kidding? It's y'all stuff. It's the thing. But you know, it's not everywhere, but I mean, it's their stuff. And I remember when I was walking down the street because I told him to go get me some seeds that's on the kitchen wall. And because he had three or four of them together, this is the older women, the younger women, everyone started to like, where did you get those from? Are you kidding? They sell them all at the market. You know, there's something very special about that, that you are actually reminding them to use their stuff. This is their stuff. This is how they used to do things. They used to carry baskets. So we want to talk about this is reusable. So you can go to the market with this. Of course, you can also do the typical things with the throws at the side, actual little pillows. You know, mine is an office in a basket. You can use it for the core. But you can use it for both, you know? And I just want you to remember that, like, this, you can take this to the market with you. And even if you're doing gardening work and you want to collect your, your harvest and you want to put, that's a great way to take it in the garden Put your stuff in it, go in the house, and make your stuff. So I always want you to know, uh, hold on, ladies. Oops. Yeah, I just wanted to say that everything I'm showing you, there's nothing I'm showing you that's an artifact. Now, the, the, um, they used to traditionally use calabashes instead of what they use, the aluminum to carry food on their head. They, thank you so much, Cutie Seven, uh, Cutie Even Seven. That uh, th thank you. If you are interested in one, let me know. I got a video on his channel. If you want to look at the other ones that I have, they would use calabashes to carry water, even calabashes to carry goods. But the one thing about the calabashes, well, the man came, the Chinese came, and gave them this aluminum thing, and that's what they use because if this falls off the head or knocks into another market woman it will break. And aluminum does not if it fell. So they started switching. So a lot of things you see, it wasn't always typical. You know, they used baskets to go. They use the baskets now to store the goods as it's coming from market. And they sit in the basket sit uh, like the ones that's, like the ones on the wall. The ones on the wall is exactly how they use it. They use it. The market lady is having her fruit and vegetables in it and she's literally selling out of it. And I would see all the market women and they sitting there and selling their goods, you know, their fruits and vegetables out of the basket. And I was just like, wait a second, where do they get those? And I was like, you want one? And I was like, oh my God, you don't think they're beautiful? And then I realized it was old men. It was, I saw them in Nazi village and then I came out here and it was always an old man, literally that sits under a tree and does it in his spare time, no rush at all. Most of the fabric is made like that too. It's the old men sitting under a tree in the village, making it in their spare time. 
I mean, first of all, the idea that it's men making it, you know, it's all these things you think you would know, you or you think that you know. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, oh, it must it must be some women. Because every time you see those village collectives, you know, and I don't know, I always they always show women, you know, making the baskets or whatever it is. But y'all, it's old men, elder men in their spare time. You know, these particular baskets, I know that I went back to get more of and I and I know the man was very, very sick, so I'm not even sure if he's alive. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you're getting when you order from Afrocentric Home Design. And I, I got it. My thing is, what I'm going to do this year, this year, meaning since the, the solar eclipse, I feel like that's the new year, I'm going to really be putting the stuff on the website and just make it easier. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting myself in the foot by not doing it. And my website is called AfrocentricHomeDesign.com. And that's the only thing I have to do because everything you get here, it has to for me. It's not a pretend. I want it to feel, I want it to be real. I feel like this is Africa. It's not everything they show. I don't talk about the negative stuff. Everybody talking about that. Oh, that I know Africa with starving kids. I don't, I don't, that's never been my narrative because I, I didn't learn about Africa that way. I actually learned about it, the richness of it, the richness in culture. The richness in in uh, the richness in ritual, the richness in talent, the richness in artistry. You understand? So that's how art came about it. So to come here, and didn't know that this part was going to happen. I didn't know that I was going to bring back to them what they once had. That is the biggest surprise of the whole thing. You know, they would say that to that. So they call me Mama Africa. And they'd be like, you want Africa than the African and Africans because this is Africa. They, bamboo, that's what grows here. So they use it on everything. They use it to make friends. Actually, they don't use it on everything. I use it on everything. They use it for what they need, right? Makes sense. They use it to make a fence around their property or around their bar. I seen it, of course, a cries, you know, they going out there, the cries going to use it for the furniture, but I'm pretty sure that it was a diaspora, and this is what I hear in the Cape Coast, that said, hey, why don't you use the bamboo to make this? You know, Afrocentricity and Afrocentric home design is very much about the experience of the diaspora and how they see Africa. It, Afrocentric home design does not really make sense in Africa. So people say, do people in the, in the African, the, you know, the average woman, we're not talking about the high-end woman, no, especially not her, especially, do they use these things in their homes? Absolutely not. Do they have it on the wall? Absolutely not. Do they put the mats on the floor? Are you kidding? They sleep on the mats. I mean, you know, that's one of the things they sleep on. So Afrocentricity is uh, it's out of our experience. It's out of our love for Africa and Africa that we never really knew. So we're piecing the pieces together and now has become like, in, a soul, in some ways like soul food, it's become part of African and African-American tradition. And I, I have no problem being the keeper of that African-American tradition. It is African, Africa in the center. But yeah, um, Africans come in, uh, family, right? Absolutely mind blowing, love it. They can't even get in. They come right through the door of the gazebo and I'll be looking for them because I'll be walking in and I'll be thinking they behind me and they're like, but this happened to me in Durham too. Like I told you, people walk in and I'm normal. My house is normal to me. And let's face it, it's not that we see it in every household in America too. Definitely among the so-called conscious, you see it more, but it's not still every black household is Afrocentric. It's, it is an aesthetic. It's about pride, it's about artistry, it's about beauty, it's about legacy, it's about retention of African culture, African artistry. It's very, you could tell, y'all could see, hey Lady B, thanks for allowing me to moderate for you. I have to get on the road now. Thank you, just wanted to say peace to all. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, Queen, I appreciate you. So, and more to come. Um, I love the curtains and I, I absolutely love the curtains. That's why I got them made. The first time it was like when I first saw the first person, oh, I want the fabric, but I want to make curtains. You should have seen. And it was like, you want to make curtains? You want to make tablecloths? Very strange. But they wound up loving it. Not that they would go get it, but 
Um, and it was so much fun working with the Kente print, and that's what this is. Uh, this is definitely Kente print, but it is such a blessing now to work with an African, Mr. Manasi, who is brilliant in the tie-dye and the batik, and the batik is really what he absolutely loves, and be able to use now that fabric. It's still African, but you will not find it at the market. And that is where we, that's where I got to keep going. How do we push it even more? How do we take it to the next level? It's love for me. Hey, me and nobody. It's love for me. Okay. It's love for me. And I, and I want to share it, but I also want you to be a part of it. Like I want you to purchase and buy. But I don't have my own website. I know if I did, you would be doing that. Um, I wake up in the morning. I do. I dress for the occasion. And the, it's always an occasion with Afrocentric home design. I literally, my clothes have to reflect the environment. It's not I'm trying to match my environment. I am my environment. And my clothes, the, I believe that there's outside clothes. And I believe that there's inside clothes. I've always felt that way. Um, but when I, when I really started doing Sacred Woman and going to the gateways and eventually being a sacred space and sacred beauty, actually both, I realized that, yeah, your clothes should move just like the energy of a room. And I'm doing a master class. I'm doing a master class this Sunday. And it's about Afrocentric movement. It's about, actually, it's about manifesting through movement. And it's a, it's, a, it's a like the classes of your home is a vision board, but how to create, and thank you to Victory Music, one of my subscribers, she said my space and my life in Ghana, it feels very magical. And I think another word was enchanting. And I really love that vibe because that's what it is for me. I want every black woman to feel that magic and feel that that movement and that sensuality and that simplicity. Yes, even to me, it's all simple. Nobody thinks a calabash here is a big deal until you turn it into a lap and a box. You get what I'm saying? Nope, the, the cloth is now, the kente, I will say it in the Ewe people and the Akan people, the kente is something they do. They, they do fold it up and they put it in a shelf and on a shelf and they keep it for years and years, forever. So it's definitely precious, but we, we make blankets out of it. They've never seen that. I want to start going back to that. I remember in the early days, I was making blankets out of the, uh, the mud cloth and the kente, the real kente. And I want to do that again. And of course, making the sheet sets. I made the curtains with Manasi's fabric. Now I want to make the sheet sets with that as well. So tell me what you would want as far as the cloth. Do you want loungewear? You know, do you want robes? Do you want pajamas? Do you want more curtains or tablecloths? Do you want napkins, entertainment pieces? I'm gonna be doing my own dishes and the whole bit, all of that. Stemwear, the whole thing. Uh, so let me know um, what you want because I'm gonna be making loungewear. I'm gonna be making PJs for myself. I'm making more robes. And definitely, I don't have aprons. I need an Afrocentric apron. I have one apron here, it's not Afrocentric. I got it at a, at the mall. They were having this little, I guess, pop-up kind of flea market. There wasn't a flea market, it was like a market. And they were there was a there was a black owned oil cooking oil company and it's called um it's called Queen. And so they had these aprons and it had Queen on it. And he's like, Hey, I wanna give you this. I didn't even buy the oil, so I wanna give you this. And it was the apron with the Queen. And that's when I want I wear because the other two <laughs> I left him, and I'm traumatized, but I was okay. You know, you win some, and you lose some. So I hope that the next person that has it, I hope they're wearing it, you know? I hope somebody's using it. And I wish I had my label, Afro Subject Home Design, in it, but that's okay, because the next aprons, huh, wait and see. So yeah, so I'm gonna be coming to you a lot. I might come one time a day, I may come twice. I'm going to be bringing cooking videos. Oh, let me tell you what I'm going to build for the cooking videos. This, this one, let me tell you what I'm building for the cooking videos. Um, so a lot of times, the uh, sorry, these, these uh, trolls are shipped. They'll give you a comment that they're going to insult you afterwards. Ain't nobody got time for that. So in this area, 
I want to create. So just imagine this is my backdrop and I'll be standing back here. So let's, I want y'all to get the picture, right? Okay, so I'm here, but let's say this is closed. I want a carpenter to create a butcher block table. A bottom on it so I can keep all of my napkins, my dishes, everything to, to set a table, right? And in a butcher block part, at the level where I could actually show you me cooking or making a meal, right? But I'm in front of the light. You'll, you'll be standing back here with the uh, tripod and you can really see me, not my back, not the darkness. That is gonna be right in this space. That's why I'm keeping this space. Cause this chair is just here for now. It wouldn't stay here, it's near the door. It wouldn't disrupt the door. Uh, the door, yeah, I'm gonna show the door. So I just want you to know that's coming, but I gotta get a great carpet. So I gotta get somebody with some vision. I want it to be, actually, I want it to be bamboo and cane, and then on the top, a butcher block. It's coming coming and also I want enough room so I could put the hot plate on top of it and so I could actually cook right in front of y'all and then take that and then also I want the side part to come up and down so I have a place to put the, the hot plate and I have another place as a chopping board to chop up the vegetables fruits whatever vegetables rather or whatever we're making for the day so hey opulence I can try to my thank you, darling. I appreciate it. Thank you. Because this is ridiculous, isn't it? Thank you, darling. So opulence too. I think you would have moderated too on the other one. So just in case one has to go. And I think eventually we'll get rid of them. But um, you know, they are there and they are annoying. But that's okay. They just want to bring it down, but we're not gonna let them. They just jealous. They just hate us. So can you imagine that? Put your block table with the little thing on the side. And the <laughs> oh, y'all, I don't know what to do with that one right there. Now we're going to be having snacks. And, and it'll encourage me to make more raw foods. It'll encourage me to, you know, have different tea remedies, do my different milks. I mean, and it, it, the space is there. I don't want to just fill the space because it's empty. I love empty space, but it's going to be very compact. It's going to be very nice. It's going to have wheels on the bottom so that I could move it out and move it out the way and change it over here. Put the table there and do that. But it's got to have wheels is everything. I don't want another piece of furniture. I want a first furniture that I can move around. That is my last big project in this kitchen. I know. It's true. After I finish the, the cabinets underneath the, the uh, countertops, after I finish the cabinets uh, on the wall, after I paint, and then whatever I decide to do with the mat, I mean with the uh, excuse me, baskets, that is it. Kitchen is done. The living room was already done. Don't get me wrong. Let me say one more thing, little room. Because I am back to this. The living room is on after this playground. I want to, you're welcome. Hard to see this yellow wall. You can see it with the light here. But I have this big old. Can't see because you know the lighting. But I have this big old yellow wall, accent wall, and I got all that space, right? See that beautiful space? If you remember when I was married, my ex had this wall in the in the countryside apartment in Saxapaha. And it had nothing but mask. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was wonderful. And I thought it was, it brought in Africa in the way that I don't think I I don't know. It's funny since I got here, I don't do the mask. I'm surrounded by masks. I got the real people, so for the first four years, I wasn't even that interested in masks, although I loved them always, but either I want to do masks or I want to do a gallery wall of art, but I do want this wall is for something, or a combination of baskets and masks would be nice too, you know, if you put it right, but we will be doing this wall. This wall will be done, it's coming, but it's not tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? I want to collect, I want to curate it well. And I want everywhere I be, I want to see something here. I want to see something great. So that wall is going to be done for something. And then that's it. And that's it. And then, and then the, the biggest other thing that I want to work on is the bathroom. So this is my plan, right? 
the landlord claims he loves us so much. <laughs> he never wants us to go, I'm sure. I don't give him a hard time, I mean, his money, and he said, but even to build, I'm thinking if I have to start, you can only really build during the dry season. I'm going to, um, it's going to take about a couple of years, I think. It's going to, uh, one year for I have one part of it, and then another year, because I want, they call it story building, see, I want two, I want a six bedroom, I want three bedrooms on the bottom and live with that for a while, and as the money keeps coming, you know, build up the rest. But it takes a minute, you know, because it's about the money and how it comes. The mind comes, you know, and, then, you know, it takes a minute. So I want to really be realistic and give myself two years to really do a, a, a place that's suitable for living. So that's two more years here. I don't mind uh, fixing it up. And even after I leave, I still want to keep the apartment. And then that's why I want to rent it out to you all. I, want, I think this place, let me tell you, that I feel like, this apartment, as far as a, a short-term rental or for, you know, like a trip, a, a retreat, it's like a retreat. I mean, because it's not just this house, it's not just this apartment, the home that you're in, but it's the outside. It's the mountains. It's the town to go to. It's the bush and it's the, it's the nature, you know. It's a great for writers, for a woman starting over, recently divorced, um, for people that need a break from the hectic lifestyle of city living or, or working a lot. And it's for the woman healing herself and her womb. It's for um, people, maybe even a couple or a mother, daughter, because you see that or something like just wanting, like I said, to get away from it all. And when I moved in, like I tell everybody, there was no gazebo. Forget that. There was no sink. There was no windows, there was no door, there was no cabinet, there was no door on the bathroom, there was no tile, there was no paint. The paint was hard. But I, I only recognize this place now. And I feel like I made it now. Once I get the bathtub in the bathroom and get the and, and I would I would replace the toilet myself, but um, and eventually we'll see. But we'll see. It was a lot. Um I think you as a diasporan or, you know, as a close foreigners, American or where are you from, uh, I think you would really appreciate the place because it's not just beautiful here. When you walk down that road and you see the mountains laid out before you, this town, to me, it just feels like something out of a book. It's, it's the only other time I felt this vibe was this place in the Dominican Republic called Samana. It feel like a mythical town. It's just like a town, like a real town. Like I, I can't explain it. Willie is a, amazing where, where the land is and we have the land because if the mountains, now you really up in the mountains. You have, you have driven up in the mountains. You, the mountains are kissing you and it's breathtaking and green and beautiful, but it's definitely still a village, right? But it's just amazing. Paved roads, it's like, you know, as they call them, the whites came here a long time ago and, and fixed that place up because it's breathtaking. But it's a village and it's small. You got to get out of town. If you ain't got a car, you're going to be stuck up there or you're going to take a motor all the way down and the roads are not great and the road leading down. It's a whole nother story. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole nother thing. Hey, okay, the mountain is mystical. Exactly. Amazing. So now this is called town. Town is where you can find food at two or three in the morning still. It's where all the shops are, which mostly the shops here are like shops for farming or construction or, but they got a few other little things. Um, and this town, this is why I want to land here. It just is this town. You go to the main town and you see families walking together. You see the kids walking from school and they be like this yay high. They can walk by themselves. You know, it's paved roads. The women are very conservative. I mean, like, y'all, yeah, it's it just was when I first came, I knew Willie I wanted to buy land. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna live up there. Honey, when I came to the town, they called this the town. This is where they even come down to buy stuff. You gotta come down here to buy everything. There's nothing up there. You can't there's no stores, there's no center, there's a little farmer's market, but it's very little. Here's the farm markets all the time, the markets all the time. Honey, 
it's a vibe, but it's a vibe for me. You know, it might be a vibe for everybody else, but it's certainly a vibe for me. And that is what you'll enjoy as well. You can see when I'm here, it's a whole nother level, isn't it? Than when I'm at the Cape Coast. The Cape Coast is it's cute because I made that apartment cute. But because I always feel a little imprisoned there, you know, because of the gate and, you know, it's different. It's different. I mean, it's, it's the beach is lovely. I wish the beach was cleaner. The beach is the, where my area is not even that clean. And that kind of bothers me. The beach is not clean. But I still would like to keep the beach apartment. Don't get me wrong on that one. Beach home. Um, but it's not in my soul. You know what I'm saying? This place is in my soul. So when the sister commented on the, the, the magic and the enchantment, and yes, and the calming and the simplicity and the beauty, this is it. I remember when Manasi, when I first told him, we, this is where I want to live, and I, you know me, I was not, I was stopped, I hit it. And I told him to go get the truck, and he was in the truck. He said, it wasn't until he was sat in the truck and all the furniture was in it that he knew that we, he, he was moving from a crop. And at first he couldn't understand it. He wasn't like he was against it, but he just didn't understand who wants to move from a crowd to the country. Who does that, right? She said, but now today, um, one year and three months later, I think or so, he is like, you are the smartest woman ever. This is the best place to live. When I go to a crowd, I want to get in and get out. All my men, <laughs> all my men, I got to pull them along, y'all. But um, it's a very special place, and it's very spiritual for me, and I want to help you find your spiritual place, too. Whether that's a spiritual, physical, or mental space, because that starts in all of them. It has to be in all of them at once. I want to teach you how to find your magic, your mystical, wherever that is. And I'm doing a whole master class on it this Sunday. We come today. It'll be on the website. I'll talk more about it on the other channel, um, the High Elevation channel. But I want every sister to feel magical and mystical and with simplicity at a very low cost. I tell people, I don't know how all this has happened. I keep telling y'all, it ain't no bunch of money up in the bank. And, and y'all be shocked. You'll be like, what? Huh? But the money is in currency, which is in frequency. And I know how to do that. And I know how to do it very well. I'm changing, y'all. I'm growing and changing in every way that I can. Every way. Just think of every... I, I, I still have problems with accepting all the good. And... To the point that I would make the good bad. I would make the good wrong. And I mean, I'm healing on so many levels. And I have the pleasure of working with um, some of my sisters to do the Sacred Woman journey. And that is a lot of healing for me. It's a lot of healing for me. It's a different journey. I've been uh, doing, I've been a Sacred Woman since 2000, so 24 years. Um, but I'm reuniting with it. And the, 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 the 24 year later, Lisa Marie, I was newbie at that, so it's a whole nother person. It's, it receives it in a whole nother way. But it's opening up my heart, it's opening up my womb, it's opening up my mind, so, and I'm accepting. So I know I talk about that. My sister, Victory Music, like, I want to thank you so much. If y'all would read, like the last video, if you just read her beautiful, beautiful comment, it just opened me up to like, yeah. This does feel really magical. It is really beautiful. It really is. I created a life through spirit and spirit through me that I absolutely love. And I'm going to love it. I'm going to accept it. I'm not going to forget it again. All right, y'all. I'm going to say goodbye because the Wi Fi is acting funky. I'm going to start to food. And uh, I want to thank y'all for helping me so much. I hope I'm going to, can I wait to show you the new fabric? I, it's not made yet, but it's coming. And the beautiful colors. I let Manasi make whatever he wants, and then I sell it. I, and then I, I turn them into something. 
Excuse me. And then I turn it into something. And then that's it. So, yeah, y'all, I've been doing oilless meals. Because, you know, I'm definitely controlling my pressure. Well, not just my blood pressure, but just pressure of life. And I want to change. I have oilless meals and see how that feels in my body. And so far, so good. Mm. But, yeah. This, this is my home. And I thank you for coming into it. Uh, tell me the kind of videos you liked. You see, I was doing, I want to do, uh, I love to get ready with me in the morning. So you can definitely do that. But I really want to do the nighttime ones, the nighttime routine, and the nighttime chit chat at the vanity. So in order for me to do that, I have to get my, I, I don't have any uh, rose water like I used to have. And I don't have the pads on my face. See, when I do those things with you, y'all help me stay healthy and, and to take care of myself, you know? So I want to do those again. Morning routine, but nighttime ones especially. I want to do cleaning ones. But more, I don't care about the cleaning one as much as I care about the refreshing. I like decorating videos. I love in the kitchen videos. I really, really love those. Um, and, of course, cooking. Um, I love... Um, making stuff in my kitchen I haven't made. Like, I mean, concoctions and masks, and I want to do all of that stuff. And, of course, I want to do hauls. I love hauls. Absolutely love a good haul. So I want to do hauls. And, um, yeah, so let me know what y'all want to see. But um, I'm preparing the way. I'm preparing the kitchen so that I can do those things with you. And also, um, I need an apron. I'm going to have my aprons because nobody want to get dirty. This is the apron I have. Did I show you that one yesterday? It's not, it's, I'm not going to say it's not special because how nice it is for somebody to give you an apron when you didn't buy anything and it says Queen. It's got the vegetables and it's a black, the name on company. So I can't even be mad. I'm very thankful. I mean, Queen, that's not a coincidence. Right. So anyway, and sometimes when I do do my cooking, I can also, I'm just looking at different places. I can have you right here, right? I'll show you what I'm doing when I'm doing it, and we'll move on from there. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for all of my uh, moderators. Uh, hey, Fiona, how are you? Greetings to the chat. Market Day, oh, got to do it. No, thank you, Opulence. Let's do Market Day Hall. Definitely Market Day Halls. Market Day Halls is a must. But Opulence, you know what you made me think of? Also, let's do taking you to the market. Let's go to the market together. And let's be there with women. You know why? Now now I can do it because they know me. They're not going to think it's weird. I got, I got ladies that I go to that would actually, I know they would love to be up in the market. They would love it. Say, oh my God, like I, I want to take you to the market so y'all can see why I love the market so much. But definitely market day halls. I absolutely love. And I usually go once a week, sometimes I go twice. And then of course new item halls too. What's new in the boutique? I'm working on putting everything on the website like I used to. It takes it is it, it is. It's not just the picture you have to take. I want to take better ones. You gotta weigh everything and then get the dimensions and then you put that in and that determines the shipping, but it's worth it. Because I wanna I wanna share with y'all. I want y'all to have an enchanted life, an enchanted home. So anyway, I love you. Is it four o'clock? Yes, I gotta close the door because the mosquitoes will have a field day. Um, and and also, you know what I wanna do more of? I know I could go over with y'all. I wanna do more um, in the gazebo. We don't spend enough time outside. That one's going to be, we're tearing the whole thing down and putting a sturdier, better one with a little bit more redesign and we're pulling it out more. So that's going to be so much fun. And tomorrow, we're supposed to be looking at this land. We ain't looking at it. I done looked at it already. I already want it. It's supposed to be the day. So when we meet with the surveyor and we do all that, and I come, so tomorrow, if you see of your notification come up for this, make sure that you look for the notification because um, I want to show you about how the surveyor, how the surveyor comes, how he clears the land, how he brings the pillars, that whole bit, the whole bit of purchasing. And not this, the whole, but that part of once you do, this is what it looks like. 
And I also want you to see the land that I'm in. I'm in my, now this is the beloved town. This is where I really want to build my house. I want to do farming up there with the farmland and the other beautiful land. I want to do a retreat center. Not a retreat center that I necessarily have retreats in, although that could definitely happen, but a retreat center that I rent out to people who want to do retreats up in the mountains. So, but the home that I want to live in, I want to live right in this town. It's beautiful. So lots to come. We also got to do hedges because it's the rainy season. So we're going to be planting hedges on that main land, the first land that I bought. Uh, you're going to come with me on that one and everything. So let's get this channel going. Like I just say, y'all being here. I mean, you know, subscribers is nice. Thumbs up. All the comments is helping tremendously. But look for me. Say, okay, she's really on this channel. Look for me. And also, of course, support Higher Elevation channel as well. And also support the master classes because that's how I can keep coming and living. And then, of course, the home decor items as well. All right, ladies, I love y'all. We had so much fun together. And I will see you all. Surveyor and land videos will be very useful for us. Yes, very much so, in real time. I think it's something that might I know. So in Ghana, a foreigner, that would be all of us. Um, you only could lease the land and you could only do it for 50 years. That means after 50 years, the kids or the kids, the kids, the grandkids so they can come back and say, I want my daddy's land back, or they can negotiate for you to have it again. But if you buy it with a Ghanaian, um, you get it for a hundred years, okay? Which means a hundred years later, the great grand great kids can come back and say, this is our land, or you can negotiate with them. You know, a lot of times it does happen, but sometimes it does. Um, and then there is the lucky ones when you get the land and it's no limit on it. It's forever. So the first land is forever land. No lease. wasn't leased. Very lucky. This is where you have a Ghanaian and the prices are different because they're Ghanaians and they know how to, they know what the price the stuff is worth or what it's, it's really worth in the states it would be worth so much we wouldn't even be able to afford it you know the farmland is the 100 year land that's a lease so called because it's the terms of the of the seller and you decide if you agree and then this land i don't know also there's different plots you can get 100 by 100 which is usually the biggest a lot of people don't want to do that so they'll give you 100 by 80 but some will even give you especially if you come into the town like this is more of the city sometimes you get 80 by 80 um, but don't worry, because a crowd you get way less, because it ain't that much. It's the land is everybody's tight, and you don't even get 100 by 100. Um, I don't disclose prices because I know that if you came, the prices would be way different. I'm getting the prices of being with a Ghanaian and being far away from my crowd and just all of those things. But um, if you want a true master class where I disclose those things, and then tell you maybe maybe we, I could help, maybe we could help. I don't know, we'll see, but but I just wanted to give you those ideas. So I'll get more details about this particular land. I'm so excited, y'all. Uh, it's right next door, so I can walk to the junction. Oh, did we do that? And um, I'm excited about it, I'm excited about it. So I will talk to y'all tomorrow. Thank you for allowing me to be with y'all. And yes, but the survey, all of that, you know, we'll see all that tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. They say tomorrow, but it could be Thursday. I'll see you on the next one. Love you, ladies. And consider joining the masterclass next Sunday. See you in the next one. Peace and love.